So was it going through all of those things that you just listed off? Is that what kind of happened with you saying that you did not want to be doing um, retribution anymore? It was a, it, like, what I happened think, there? To, and, and I know I spoke <laughs> on it, but it's one of those things where it's like, oh man. Um, so retribution was one of those opportunities, right? You, you want to get to the main master. That was the thing. Retribution was, I was going there to be as an extra. I was in the middle of a storyline with Rhea Ripley at that time. And they called me to Raw just to be extra. I was like, all right, so not only am I doing Raw and SmackDown, but I'm also doing NXT in a whole week. And that was just so much. I was like, all right, boom, 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 boom. And then they're like, well, now we want you part of this retribution. Me in my head, I'm like, okay, I just finished my storyline with Rhea in our steel cage match. This is my opportunity. However, personally, I needed to know what this group was going to do. What is this group? What is the mentality of this group? Is this something personally that I can get behind? Um, no one knew anything about this group. Mind you, everything was going on in the world with, you know, the riots and, so is this group part of that? Because I don't condone it. I don't right. want to be a part of something that may be mirror something outside of, of real life, right? So they didn't know what, what was going on. So I was like, all right, so just keep us hidden. That's what they did with the hoods and everything. I was like, all right, cool. Um, the moment that we unveiled ourselves, it was one of those things where I was like, I, I just can't. I can't do this. I cannot mm -hmm. mentally go through this group knowing that, my whole career was based on me and doing things my way. It's okay to be part of a group, but it wasn't okay when there was no communication to talk to me about the group. There was, it wasn't okay to let me know that you were going to change my name the day of without a contract. I was right. still on an NXT contract and I'm not stupid. I'm, I'm a grown ass woman. Talk to me. You know, if, if, if you want to change my name, tell me, don't tell me the day of the show that you're going to change my name. We didn't agree on that. We don't agree on anything. And, you know, if you want to do something, that's fine. But don't expect me to take it down lightly. I'm one of those people that if you talk to me, we can talk. I'm on an NXT contract. Here we are in Raw. I'm not part of Raw yet. Let's talk. Let's figure out what's going on. The moment that happened, I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to be a part of this group. There's mm -hmm. no communication. I want to be known as Mercedes Martinez. That is what yeah. I built my legacy on. Sure. That is what I built my brand on. I don't want to be known as another name in WWE because my point to get here was based on me. You took me as me. You took me as Mercedes Martinez, not as another person. You can change me all you want, but I don't have a long shelf life. <laughs> I'm 40 years old. There's no way that you're going to try to change a character and expect me to go five, 10 years. I mean, yeah. I probably can, but I had to think realistically. 20 years as Mercedes, there's just no way that I can go as another name, another character, anything. I can try. And like not a very good name. Let's just also <laughs> put that up. <laughs> I think people were kind of questioning all of the names that were going on with Retro. You know like, what? It what? Was, it but was also weird. Things. Like I think, I think specifically for you and Mia, like two women who have made their name on the independent circuit, and then to lose that value by slapping on these kind of you know gimmicky <sighs> names and whatnot just was, was a bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, it was just just talk to us, you know. I, I I believe in communication, and I think maybe they had a lot of things going on. I'm not sure. Maybe they didn't want us. Maybe they did. I was like, okay, I could be a part of this, but I need to know communication. Like, I'm still. When are we going to talk about my contract? When are we going to talk about what's going into this raw contract? When are we going to talk about this name change? When are we going to talk about gear and clothes? Character. I had no clue what this character was going to be like. We're just dressed in black and we're just walking yeah. out there. What am I? Am I still going to be Mercedes character with a different name? Am I wearing a mask? I can't breathe in this mask. I can't work in a mask. I can't do this. Okay, you want to put me in a mask? Here, I got a face mask for my entrance. Use mine. <laughs> like, I, it, it was just, it was the communication factor that threw me off. And, and not to say that people can't do it, just me personally. Um, I am who I am, and I'm very just... I'm very to the point blunt and I'm very professional about it. I'm not gonna like F you do this. No, I'm just like, hey, you know, this is what I think. Here's an alternative. Here's another thing. Like I, I'll give you suggestions. I'm not gonna say no to one thing, but here's an alternative to maybe what can we do. I will always give something um again, but it was just I don't think it was for me personally. I just think oh. I'm better off myself. <laughs> How do you think um, the suggestions and you not wanting to be a part of retribution was received to, I, I don't know who, was it like through Hunter that you had those conversations or 
Who did you have to have this con- or Bruce Pritchard? Who are you having those conversations with? Uh, Bruce Pritchard was the one who told me that my name was changing right before we got on veal. And I was just like, oh no, we can't do this. Um, I spoke to Carano. Um, I spoke to Devon. I eventually called Matt Bloom um, and just said, this is what I'm feeling. I'm not feeling this group. I don't want to be a part of this group. I don't think it's right for me and my career. Um, I just think that it's best suited for someone who has a long shelf life or someone new who can yeah. build their career here, um, who has the shelf life. If this doesn't work, what are you going to do with me? Um, I just, I would rather just keep building on my Mercedes name. If that's okay, I would rather just stay in NXT. Um, it's not about the money because it never is for me. Um, it's, it's really about just me and my legacy and what I've done for 20 years. And they all agreed. I was just like, you know, I, I'm good. Thank you for the opportunity. And when there's another opportunity for me to be Mercedes, then, you know, hit me up. I'm still going to be here. And that's how we took it. So they took me two months off and they're like, yep, we agree. Everybody was on board. They talked to Vince. From what I understand, he understood where I was coming from and they put me back on NXT. And it took about two months to kind of let everything clear, uh, let everything try to figure out storylines. And then I was back on NXT and I hit it running from there. It was just like a reset, I guess you can say. Yeah. Interesting. I always find it so interesting, like how the creative stuff like that comes about. I mean, obviously like being around it and hearing where certain things come and go, but I feel like the retribution stuff was happening as I was on my way out. So uh, I didn't get to uh, be around too much of that stuff when it was happening. Um, what about working with Sarah Del Rey at NXT? What was that like for you guys to meet back under, uh, under that roof? Uh, different. <laughs> it's, it's, we've been, you know, we wrestled each other throughout the years and I was so happy when she got signed as a coach because she's brilliant brilliant in, in coaching uh, the new generation um but it was hard to be like oh damn she's my boss now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like all right so how, how do we do this how, how do we go like i i you're my cool friend like we, we, you know i can work you know i can do things you know what i'm capable of but i have to do what <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, okay okay so it was it was a balance uh but all That's in funny. all it was it was a good time it was just like all right boss <laughs> uh, it's definitely weird to call her that it was definitely weird to see her as my trainer um, <laughs> yeah teaching me stuff when I'm like I, but I know how to do this already but okay <laughs> um, was, so um it, it was fun were there ever conversations about you being a coach at NXT I feel like I heard that kind of floated around before you signed you came in as a talent yeah, it, uh, it it was. It came around more than once. Um, I did before I actually got signed. Uh, it was after the May Young Classic. Um, I actually guest coached at the PC for a week. Um, I believe Serena Deeb, who was a coach at that time, she ended up, um, I guess she was on vacation. So they brought me in as a guest coach. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to be here for a week. And all I did was just kind of run the drills that I would do um, with my students or, you know, people that I was helping at another school. Um, so I just ran through the drills and all that. They were very happy for the week that I was there. We tried to get me back another week. However, I was doing a lot of overseas tours. And when I say overseas, it was back to back. It was England, Canada, Australia, and it just kept going back to back. So I never got back to do my second, uh, mm. week there. Um, and then, um, after that, pretty much, I just kept going, going, going. And, here we are when I got signed. Um, when I did get signed talking to Triple H, it was, um, we talked about, uh, he basically just said, sorry for bringing you in so late. He goes, you know, we've always wanted you, but the concept was, just wasn't the right time to bring you in. And I get mm-hmm. it, you know, for me to be brought in, I'm, I'm a different breed of a wrestler. I'm not, you know, I'm very no nonsense, very tough, badass looking, you know, there's criteria that WWE looks for. And I never was that criteria. I never was that mode for them to bring me in. But when they did bring me in, it was the right time. And we always talked about that maybe when my contract ended or when it was nearing the end of the contract, that maybe we can transition to coaching or health coaching or aging or something like that, that I would Mm -hmm. always have a job at WWE in one way form of capacity that I will always be there to help the new generation um and that was our conversation when I got signed so there was always something there and I've always helped the girls I've helped the girls you know in open ring and and, you know I give them different things and and the way I would see things um but it didn't work out like that for right now I don't not not, I'm not going to say that I won't be back I just think if I ever go back to WWE won't be as a talent it's going to be helping the new generation which is what I hope to do anyways in the long run so 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that would definitely be nice, especially for the girls down there that would, uh, that have looked up to you and the people that were able to work with you to be able to get in there and learn a bit more under the, uh, the learning tree of Mercedes. <laughs> I think that would be really cool.